Jung, still like ink? Is it still still a good coin? What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, to me, I feel like ink, um, again, right, it's the incentive token, right? So anybody who's willing to accept the, the, in, the risk of impermanent loss, uh, they're looking for ink as kind of a reward right for providing that liquidity especially in v1 and v1 is right now where the the primary liquidity for all of the core coins are and so um obviously i mean if you're providing liquidity and the incentive token price is down it's not even covering impermanent loss and you see things where uh like pulse x or even ink is just like you know taking off right so there's there's obviously a lot of impermanent loss with that i think one of the values of having a valuable ink is that it encourages people uh, who are providing liquidity to continue to do so and it also encourages new people like you know well maybe it is worth uh some impermanent loss providing some liquidity to the community they get the the income and um you know if if ink remains at a low price I just don't see necessarily where the the incentive lies for that. Obviously, some some people would do it. Um, I'm really bullish on it, right? So the price dipped a lot. Like this was uh, like so 50 cents, right? I was I was in shock and awe when it reached 50 cents, um, and I was even more in shock and awe when it did like 700 percent, right? Um, you know, it, it, it's. It's one of those things, it's kind of a risky play, right? So as the price goes up, people are going to want to sell. As the price goes down, people want to re maybe remove liquidity. You know, maybe some liquidity providers get nervous and pull their liquidity. Um, what's interesting about Inc. is it actually has the least liquidity out of the four core coins, right? So it's more... Um, the fluctuations, the volatility uh, is going to be a little bit more than some of the other core coins. But what's also nice is that it's pair, um, what it's paired with is Pulse, is primary pairing, right, is Pulse and Pulse X. So when those start pumping up, Ink will also start pumping, right? And so uh, that Ink combined with, like, let's say a new whale comes to the ecosystem, they see Ink is incredibly cheap, they buy some Ink because they want to start providing liquidity. Not only is the the liquidity um, smaller, right, than some of the other pools, but um, you know, with uh, with Pulse and Pulse X pumping, in combined with uh, let's say a, a, maybe a whale wants to purchase to provide some liquidity, I think that would pr provide a substantial bump, right, in the price. Um, yeah, it's got some some really complex uh, mechanics, right, to to think about. It's like uh, I hear a lot of people saying that. Ink has no utility, but I think that ink actually has a lot of utility if you think about liquidity providing and providing incentives for people to continue to provide liquidity. I think at face value, and this is something I want to ask a lot too, at face value, you know, what can you do with ink? Well, you can earn it and you can buy it and you can sell it. Um, but you've talked about monetizing risk before. I think that's a really interesting way to look at it. And also, if the vision of, you know, RH's vision of liquidity and, you know, PulseX being the mecca and, uh, you know, all the pairing for the P tokens and all that stuff. If ink sucks or people don't want it or its price chart just goes down, so it's not worth earning, doesn't that kind of just kill the whole vision? Like, doesn't that have to be valuable, at least enough, a baseline for, for the vision to, you know, become true? Yeah. And, and honestly, so, the the v1 farms right we if um if you're i i know you know but for anybody who doesn't know right the v1 farms it's like the 100 percent buy and burn right so really that's the main incentive for v1 farms and if if i you know was a whale and i had a stake a large stake in pulse x i would want that 100 percent buy and burn right because it's going to pump pulse x um so but uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, ink is risky. We we saw, you know, it went up to like uh, 82, 84 dollars when Pulse first launched. Uh, you know, it was um, kind of that hype right right at launch. We saw it go that high, and obviously in the bear market, um, you know, people capitulating, selling the ink that they had, and things like that. We kind of saw the price 
uh, decreasing. And uh, I think once the bull comes back, I mean, we might be uh, cooking on all four burners, so to speak, with uh, with ink. I mean, we've already kind of seen what happens with uh, just like a week long pump, like over the course of a year, um, you know, we see, we'll see where it goes. What do you think, Sloth? Yeah, I think those are all great points, Trio. Um, I mean, so uh, people buying the incentive token, right, they're paying the liquidity providers to provide their liquidity. Um, and the higher the token is, the more incentive there is uh, to provide liquidity for it. Um, the the uh, predictable emission schedule of the, of the incentive token makes it a decent token for accumulation uh, for large players who want to dominate certain pools, specifically the Pulse X and Pulse to Ink uh, farms. And so because you know that, um, you know, the first year of Ink, 100% of the supply comes out. From year one to year two, 50% of the total supply comes out. Year two to three, 25%, and it continues to have from there. And so these first years are the time, this first probably year, if not the first three years generally, is the time if you want to submit yourself as an uh, incentive token whale and dominate the Inc. Pulse X farms. Uh, these are the years to accumulate all of those, uh, the Pulse X Pulse uh, Inc. farms. These are the years to cement that position for you. Um, and so what that does is uh, if you are a major Inc. holder and you dominate those pools, well, in a way you are dominating the liquidity that is being gained from the uh, Pulse X buy and burn. So the way that works is that all these other tokens uh, typically have their pairing with Pulse. That's the main pairing that any new token uh, has when they're created. And what the buy and burn does is it takes the buys and the sells and it routes it through the uh, coin to Pulse pool, buys Pulse, and to get the Pulse X because the deepest liquidity between Pulse and Pulse X is the Pulse Pulse X farm on Pulse X V1. It takes it, puts the Pulse into that pool, and then takes out the Pulse X, and that Pulse X gets burned. So if you just look at the buy and burn on its own and don't take into account the other market dynamics, Pulse X is getting more valuable relative to Pulse over time because it's deflating and it's being removed from the market while Pulse is being added into that pool. Well, with the uh, Pulse X Inc. farm and the uh, Pulse Inc. farm, you have access to that liquidity that's being siphoned from the DEX as a whole through the buy and burn because you have access to it by trading your ink for Pulse X or Pulse, trading that Pulse for the stable coins or ETH or RAP Bitcoin that exist on the farms, or trading your Pulse X for the Pulse to get into that value. So the buy and burn harvest liquidity from the entire ecosystem, and the people who dominate the ink pools get access to that liquidity via trading their incentive tokens for that uh, for those stable coins and that value. And so if you want to dominate the ability to, if you want to control the volume that the buy and burn, no, no, that's not how I should say it. If you want to control the liquidity that's getting routed into the Pulse X Pulse pool via the buy and burn, if you want to say, you know, have the greatest percentage of that quote unquote exit liquidity being produced by the buy and burn, you pretty much need to get a large position of ink now to get all of that um, going forward into the future. And that's like, that's a multi-year, uh, multi-market cycle outlook that you have to have in order for that to work out. That's that's not something that, you, that you're just trying to play one cycle. You're trying to get power in a system for what you believe will be something producing income for decades to come, right? So the, the shorter term volatility is only opportunity to accumulate that position um, rather than say a retail investor who's trying to multiply four to five figures. And when you're when you're buying ink, what are you saying? And when you're buying PulseX, what are you saying? Just for people to understand, because a lot of people are like, "Oh, you're stupid for buying ink. Like, why are you buying that token? All this stuff." And then, but they're very bullish on PulseX, for example. Well, how, how would you reconcile that? Um, I, I mean, I mean, ink and and PulseX are always kind of like uh, I've always seen them as leverage on Pulse Chain, right? So I think generally, it, when the price goes up, it's going to go up higher. And when price goes down, it's going to go down further, generally. Specific instances, this may not always be the case, 
But um, that is pretty much their role I see in the Pulse Chain ecosystem, their extra leverage on top of Pulse without having to actually use leverage itself. And so the people who are speculating on it, people who are buying it, generally the reason why is they're speculating that this is going to be closer to the bottom than before and that I'm going to make more Pulse on the move up than I would be if I just bought Pulse now. 